What are the differences between buying an investment property in Tennessee versus Georgia in the Chattanooga area? Welcome. I am Adrian Green, real estate investor, realtor, and I lead the Auburndale Group here in the Chattanooga area. And we often have clients asking about, should I buy in Georgia? Should I buy in Tennessee? So we're going to go through some of the little differences and considerations in this video. Now, if you enjoy watching videos about real estate investing or real estate in general, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you get to watch more. And it supports me for all this information I'm putting out there for you. So let's go through a few little differences about Georgia and Tennessee in the Chattanooga area, and then we'll get into some details of the real estate differences and owning rental property differences in both states. Now, this is a consideration here because Chattanooga is right on the state border and it is on the Tennessee side. They're really close here. So our downtown office is 3.6 miles or a total of six minutes of drive time from the Georgia border. It's standard here to see cars from both Tennessee and Georgia throughout the region. And even within our team, we have people who live in either state. Both states have A, B, and C class areas. It's not like one state is better than the other or has higher class areas. Both states have a variety of areas here. A couple of differences to note. Tennessee has no state income tax. That does affect whether or not some people would prefer to live on the Tennessee side versus the Georgia side. More consideration of people relocating to the area, honestly. And Georgia has more places with acreage close to downtown. So if you're somebody who wants that country feel or your you know, tenants are someone who wants that country feel and still wants to have a short commute to downtown, we find often people looking for that buy on the Georgia side because that's where those properties are. Also, family history is an important factor for a lot of locals on where they want to live. So you, I just run into this that sometimes people from out of state are like, well, if Tennessee has no state income tax, doesn't everybody who lives, who makes, an, who makes decent money want to live in Tennessee? Not necessarily. You know, there's a lot of things that go into there. Again, acreage, housing availability, houses are slightly less expensive on the Georgia side, and also this family history. You know, if you're somebody who was born and raised in Ringgold and all your family is in Ringgold, you're less likely to live on the complete other side of the Chattanooga metro area, let's say in Saudi Daisy, right? Half an hour away. You're probably going to live in Ringgold. That's what we see here. Somewhat people living close to their family. Uh, they know that area. They're comfortable. Things like that. Now that we've kind of introduced the two areas as a whole, let's talk specifically about real estate investing in each. Both are typically considered to be pretty landlord friendly states. Um, if you are from a state that has notable tenants rights, that's not something you're going to see in either of these states. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Another factor is the LLCs. Some people, when they buy a property, they want to create an LLC in that state where the property is and either hold or manage it or somehow associate it with that. So if you are looking to create an LLC, Question we get asked is, well, are LLCs notably different in Georgia and Tennessee? The process is pretty comparable and easy in both Georgia and, L and Tennessee to get an LLC. And I will note there's a small difference that I don't think is material, but I would want to point out. In Georgia, the filing fee to create an LLC is $110. In Tennessee, the filing fee is $300. That is a difference of $190. Again, in the scheme of things, likely not material, worth noting so that you're an informed client. Now, as we said, both are pretty landlord friendly. Let's go across about through some specifics of how things work in both states to give you an idea. Uh, in Georgia, if you have a tenant whose lease has expired and they're now month to month, it's a natural progression for many leases that if you don't renew or change the terms, it goes to month to month. Once it's month to month, you must give that tenant 60 days notice if you're going to terminate the lease or change the terms. In Tennessee, that is 30 days notice, which is what I see in many other states. So I always point out Georgia has 60 day notice when you're on month to month to change anything. Now, when we're talking about evictions in Georgia, if you're evicting for non-payment, the tenant has seven days past the due date to pay the rent. Once those seven days are up, you can get a court date, which is often in three weeks or less, 
And once the court rules in the landlord's favor, the tenant has seven days to either pay that past rent owed or vacate the property. Uh, overall, I would say Georgia has a 30-page landlord-tenant handbook. Its link is in the description below, and that walks you through most of the, or all the guidelines that I'm aware of in terms of Georgia's landlord-tenant law. And that gives you an idea of the simplicity of the law in Georgia, that it's only a 30-page book. For those of you so for some other pages, you're like, oh my goodness, that would be 150 pages here, right? That's, Georgia tries to keep it simple. Now in Tennessee, if we had that same sort of issue of non-payment of uh, rent, right? If we have any kind of non-compliance of the lease, non-payment of rent being one example, the landlord gives 30 days notice, the tenant has 14 days to remedy the situation instead of seven. So pretty much somebody doesn't pay the rent, you as a landlord say, you gotta be out in 30 days. They have 14 days to pay the rent to make it right and stay. And any month to month tenancy can be terminated with 30 days notice, like we said before, versus 60 days in Georgia. And the evictions are still typically pretty quick. In Hamilton County versus other counties, you know, that is where the city of Chattanooga is located. So there's a little more volume going through the courts there. So it may take a little bit longer than to get that court date. Uh, it might take three weeks instead of two weeks if the other surrounding counties on both the Tennessee and Georgia sides are at three weeks. And it just depends on how busy the courts are. So. Overall, I think we see that there's not a ton of differences. If the biggest difference I'm pointing out is LLC cost and 60 day versus 30 day notice when somebody is month to month. Other than that, it's not, not too, too material. Again, both of their handbooks and details are linked in the description below. So if you want to learn more, check out there. And if you are interested in doing anything with real estate in the Chattanooga area, my contact information is below. Love to talk about all things real estate. Always happy to add value to people. So if this was helpful, again, thumbs up and write a comment below. Thank you so much. Adrian Green here. Have a great day.